After a long winter break, Formula One is back for another exciting season of surprises, plot twists, and so much more. The 2020 racing calendar will now feature 22 rounds, and that is going to ramp up the pressure on the teams up and down the paddock to make sure that their cars can survive their year-long fight from Australia to Abu Dhabi. Plus, more records could fall by the wayside as reigning world champion Lewis Hamilton will try and seek his seventh world driver's title, which would tie him with F1 legend Michael Schumacher. Not only that, he and his teammate Valtteri Bottas will look to continue the streak of consecutive constructor titles from Mercedes AMG, while Ferrari and Red Bull will try and upset the Silver Arrows. During the second half of the 2019 season, the FIA announced that the German Grand Prix will not be returning to the 2020 calendar. In its place, the Zandvoort circuit will play host to the returning Dutch Grand Prix. Now, the last time the Netherlands hosted a Formula One race was back in 1985, and the late great Nicky Lauda went ahead and was the last driver to take the checkered flag at the famed circuit. After the announcement was made public, the Dutch faithful took to the streets to celebrate knowing that countryman Max Verstappen will get to race on home soil. Also being added to the 2020 schedule is the inaugural Vietnam Grand Prix on the streets of Hanoi. Drivers from all 10 teams gave positive feedback on this news and are looking forward to tackling the challenges of these two new circuits. But the biggest news of all came out of the FIA media conference is the return of the 22 car field and the creation of the 11th team. Shortly after that news came, they granted a Formula One license to the newly formed Bengal F1 racing team founded and owned by Daniel Haight. On top of all that, Daniel announced during his turn at the mic that along with running the American team's day-to-day -day operations behind the scenes, he'll also be seen behind the wheel as the lead driver out on the track. When asked for the reason behind this bold move, Daniel said in quote with a smile on his face that he took the inspiration from former NASCAR driver and current co-team owner Tony Stewart of Stewart Haas Racing and drove for them in the process. Also, he stated that he has a ton of respect for Gene Haas in terms of putting the United States on the Formula One map back in 2016. A few weeks before the start of winter testing, Daniel announced in a separate media press briefing that his team will be sponsored by Pacifico and his two cars will be powered by Honda. He stated that he was impressed by the fuel efficiency and how hard the engine supplier has worked to become competitive against the likes of Renault, Ferrari and Mercedes units. Also, Daniel announced that he signed Formula 2 driver Mick Schumacher. Mick is the son of the seven-time world champion Michael Schumacher and also the nephew of former F1 driver Ralph Schumacher. After Mick was introduced, Daniel stated that he was thrilled to give Mick the opportunity to continue his family's legacy and that someday he will be called a world champion in the future. Now we are going to turn it over to Formula One insider Will Buxton, where he's standing by with Daniel at the Bengal F1 Racing Headquarters. Hello folks and welcome to the HQ of Formula One's newest team. We've been invited backstage to gain an exclusive insight into what could be one of the most exciting entries in the sport for many years. Now we've seen a number of new teams enter the sport over the last decade, amongst their number Manor, Caterham, HRT and of course Haas. And while some have proved to be successful, others have morphed into different teams and some have disappeared completely. What marks this team out, though, as being something different is that its owner is also its driver. Now, there's a rich history of that in Formula One too. Sir Jack Brabham, John Surtees, Graham Hill and Bruce McLaren all drove their own cars in the sport, but it has become increasingly rare in recent years. What's very special about this team, though, is that, that while the team itself is new to Formula One, so too is its driver and owner. Whatever happens this season, you've already made the history books. Tell me, do you feel up to the mammoth task of both managing and driving for a Formula One team? Before I answer your question, Will, I wanted to again give a huge thank you to the people in the FIA for granting me the opportunity to compete on the world stage. And I'm flattered to be mentioned alongside the people you spoke about that were also both team owners and drivers. Also, a huge thank you again goes to Tony Stewart for inspiring me to take on this incredible feat. But I'm going to be straight with you up front. It's been a lot of hard work to build this team from the ground up, 
and we've still got plenty of challenges ahead of us. But I wouldn't have accepted this task if I didn't believe in both myself and the amazingly talented people that I brought in to help make this team successful. Every team needs two drivers, but what was it that drew you to your teammates? I had my eye on Mick during his stint in Formula 2, and those insane overtakes that he made in a few of those races really caught my attention. And as I stated in the pre-winter testing press briefing, that I wanted to give Mick the opportunity to continue the Schumacher family legacy in Formula 1. And I am so honored that he's getting that chance when we came to terms with his contract. Not only that, I see a lot of potential in Mick, and I'm predicting that in a few years' time, he will make his own history along with his dad of being the first father-son Formula 1 world champion. No one aims to finish bottom of the table. Who's the team you're aiming to beat? Considering that we are a fresh new team in Formula 1, and also the second to be based in the United States, it might not be as easy for us compared to how Haas did in their debut season back in 2016. Again, I have nothing but absolute respect for Gene Haas for venturing out into this branch of motorsport, planting the US flag into the ground, and how far they've come in the last three seasons. But looking at the preseason timesheets, Haas, Alpha Tauri, Alpha Romeo, Williams and us have been close to each other in terms of consistency. But if you want my honest opinion, I'm predicting that we're going to have some good on-track battles with Nicholas Latifi and George Russell of Williams. But you never know what might happen in this sport. We might pull off a few surprises and challenge the top guys. How are you expecting the car to feel out on track? As soon as I got my department teams in place, the very first objective that we tackled was making sure that our chassis design and balance would handle the different tracks that we'll be going to this year. There is one track, however, that may give us the most difficulty, and that is Monaco because of the twistiness of the track layout and the tight spaces, since the streets are pretty narrow there. And after we analyzed the data during the final winter test debrief, we nailed the chassis balance on all sides of the car. The other teams now have years of experience, both on and off the track. How are you planning to catch up to them? While many of the personnel on the other teams have either switched to different ones, have taken on different roles within the team, or have left the sport completely. But thanks to a young and talented group of people in the aero department, they were able to find some unique ways of improving the car's straight line speed while still being within the technical regulations. This will definitely help us at circuits with long straightaways and when overtaking opportunities present itself. Overtaking is a key part of this sport. How have you ensured that your car can take advantage of each opportunity that comes your way? Well, after all the expenses were paid for the Honda engine and mixed initial contract cost, we only had a little bit of wiggle room in terms of finances to start the season with. So I met with the lead engineers in all four of my departments, and they offered up ideas of what we could do to help improve the overall performance of the car in terms of top speed, cornering, and exit speed without having to dip into our cash reserves. Then the chassis engineer gave me a report from our design company that they were able to create parts that were lighter and more rigid, and that was the decision that we went with. So because of that, the overall weight of the car has been reduced and that will help greatly with the acceleration and getting through the corners quicker. And finally, which of your new departments are you most proud of? That's a really good question, Will. To be honest with you, all four departments have worked tirelessly to get the car ready for the start of the season. But if I had to pick just one, I would say the chassis because they've laid an incredible foundation for the other three to build on, and hopefully that will generate inspiration to them and the rest of the team. Well, that's about all we've got time for here. We will see how this fledgling team fares in its first Grand Prix. Hey guys, Chicago Man 2008 here, and welcome to Formula One 2020 My Team Career Mode. This is the mode that many of us Formula One players have been looking forward to since the announcement was made a few weeks ago prior to the full release. Before I show you around the HQ side of this mode, I want to give a couple of big shout outs. First to my good friend Ray Flores who will be voicing the intros to my videos and also to a Formula 1 content creator that I've been watching for a while, Erva, because I'm basing my My Team Career Mode series loosely off of his famed My Driver series but without all the modding that he did. So here we are in our team headquarters and I'll take you through the various options that we can do before heading into a Grand Prix weekend. In the activities section of the overview, we can choose from any of the selectable events and they will be slotted into the activity timeline and fill in the corresponding number of days to complete it. Each activity will affect either the department morale, your teammate stats, and also your acclaim and resource that you'll see in the bottom middle in either a positive or negative way. Also, you'll see in the activity timeline an event highlighted in orange, 
which means that it is a major event and we can't schedule any activities for that day. And right out of the gate, I'm going to select two preseason activities to do since we're still technically in the preseason state. The first one is the driver training camp, which will take five days to complete. When that gets done, it will increase Mick Schumacher's experience, racecraft, awareness, and pace by three. Plus, it will also add 250 resource points into our R&D pool, which I will get to in the R&D section a little bit later. That will leave four open days before the car reveal, so unfortunately the other activities are either a five or a seven day event. The second preseason activity that I'm going to select is the preseason merchandise sale, and that will bring in an additional $500,000 into our team bank. So as you can see in the top right, we'll be using 10 out of the 14 free days that we have available, and the amount of free days will change after each Grand Prix. In the facilities section, we can see the status of our six departments. As you can see, the chassis department already has four spec upgrades on it and is already at facility level one. This is because I complimented them during my preseason interview with Will Buxton. In the bottom middle, you'll see the total number of resource points that the aero, chassis, engine, and durability departments will add to my resource point pool and also the total combined cost of running the facilities on a weekly basis. Next, we have the usual R&D section that most of us have gotten used to seeing since F1 2017. But you'll notice that the durability line has been added to the vehicle performance status. And as we take a look at the R&D tree for Formula 1 2020, you'll also see that four minor chassis upgrades, two on the weight reduction and two on the weight redistribution alongside a minor drag upgrade on the aero side have been applied to the car already. This was part, again, to the answers that I gave to Will during the preseason interview when he asked me about specifics of the car. Now we move on to the vehicle section where you can view the wear of your engine components as well as your gearbox. A change has been made from F1 2019 and that is that we now have a third MGUH component that we can utilize if the time comes. But if we need to use a third energy store or control electronics, each of those new components will cost us five places on the starting grid since that will be beyond the limit of those components that we are allotted at the start of the season. After that is the corporate section and in the sponsorship tab, we can view the current sponsors that we are currently signed with. Right now, we just have our main sponsor, Pacifico, and once our team acclaim reaches a certain level, we will be able to unlock a secondary sponsor slot in which we can sign a new sponsor to add to the amount of our total weekly income. In the Contracts tab, we can view our teammates' current terms, how much we are paying, and also how long to go before starting contract renegotiations. Also, we can view which level of driver perks our teammate and myself have purchased plus our individual driver acclaim that will eventually increase throughout the season. Over to the Drivers Market tab now, and we can view all of the Formula 1 drivers that are currently in the game, plus what team they are currently with, their acclaim level, how much they are getting paid, and also their overall rating. And yes, even the Formula 2 drivers are included as well, and they will be free agents. Throughout the season, their acclaim and market values will fluctuate, so you want to keep an eye on this if you are trying to sign a specific driver to your team. When the time comes, I'll get more in-depth on how the contract system works. In the Finance tab, we can view how we are doing in terms of money being brought in versus money being spent, and this one is pretty self-explanatory. In the Finance History tab, we can view our total finance amount during the contract period. The red section there at around the month of August means that it is the contract renegotiation period. Back to the R&D tree again. You'll see small icons in the Engine and Durability sections. Those are upgrades that the engine supplier will provide throughout the season. And as you can see, I already have four engine supplier upgrades installed. Now keep in mind that these upgrades will not only be applied to me, but also to the other Honda powered teams as well, like Red Bull and Alpha Tauri. Same holds true if you're a Renault, Ferrari, or Mercedes powered team. The durability icons, again, are provided by the engine supplier and will come in throughout the season. These are general maintenance upgrades which will reduce the overall engine and gearbox wear by 10% for each lit icon. Also, as I stated in my preseason interview, the track that I believe will give me the most trouble is Monaco because we'll need to run the highest level of downforce that we can to try and get around the tight corners and also the famous Nouvelle and swimming pool chicanes. And taking a look at the aero performance chart, we are fourth from the bottom. Also, you'll see that there are question marks scattered throughout the aero section of the tree and other areas as well. This means that in order to unlock those upgrades, we'll need to eventually buy a spec upgrade to that facility. 
So I'm going to go ahead and straight away purchase a minor front downforce upgrade and it will hopefully come in after the Australian Grand Prix. So now that you've seen what's available on the HQ side of things, I'm going to go ahead and advance time to the day of the car reveal and you'll see that the driver training camp will be completed in that five days as well as bringing in the weekly income and taking out money for the facility expenses. And now that we have a little over $2 million, I'm going to go into the marketing department and purchase an upgrade to the activities management and that will come in on March 8th. What this upgrade will do, as it says on screen, is that it will slightly increase positive effects from team activities and this will especially be big for our preseason merchandise sale activity that I scheduled for after the car reveal. So now, it's that time you all have long been awaiting for. It's time to reveal the livery of our car for Season 1. And there she is, all decked out in gold yellow along the side pot and on the nose cone, jet black along the front wing and engine cover, and bright orange on the rear wing and halo. Man, she is a thing of beauty. We'll continue to advance time, and the upgrade we purchased for the marketing department will now come in, as well as the second installment of income and running costs. Now you'll see that the money we will gain from the preseason merchandise sale has doubled from 500000 which was what we would have gotten, to now a cool $1 million. And that was a really smart move on my part because it will now lead into the last bit of business that I will now take care of, and that is purchasing all the level one driver perks. These perks will stay with me in this mode, and once I hit a specific driver acclaim level, I'll be able to purchase the next level of that perk. So with these new perks, I will gain an additional 10% to my driver acclaim, reduce engine wear by 10%, unlock the level one tier of interview answers, and also get an additional 10% of resource points after the third practice session. So that's going to end the preseason buildup. So guys, if you did enjoy this video, please smash that like button, get subscribed, and also turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any new videos coming out. Until next time, this is Chicago Man 2008, and I'll see you in Australia.